Hi everybody, Mark Claghorn here in the studio. Uh, welcome to the Photographer Academy in our Live at Five, which is every Wednesday. Um, today we're continuing our kind of boudoir-based kind of themes, as it were. We've got our lockdown model, Kelsey, with us. So she's been kind of shooting all day with us and things, really. And uh, we thought we'd kind of finish off with a little bit of a, a more dramatic image. I saw some amazing fashion photography uh, many, many moons ago, as it were. Um, and, and kind of using uh, the likes of silk sheets and kind of wrapping almost the implied nude. I think it was an advert for a perfume or something like that with it, um, but really, really good. So we thought we'd kind of use that as an influence and kind of give you a little bit of, uh, of ideas on how to shoot, shoot in and what to do and everything else with it. So um, we've basically set up um, kind of two halves of a silk sheet. <laughs> what that means is we don't have one long enough. <laughs> Okay, so we've basically got uh, two, pe uh, two pieces and each one of these is going to wrap uh, around Kelsey. Before we, um, we get going though, it's a, it's a good idea to kind of talk about the setup here and everything else. Now, if you're not used to the Photographer Academy, when remember we're an online training company for all types of photographer, hob uh, the hobbyist right through to the pro. Uh, we're in our 13th year, we've got over 3,000 films that are available on online. Uh, it costs about 59 quid for the year to actually join as a pro membership where you kind of see to get all the kind of show all the cool stuff plus the apps a business level is 99 pound with us but again you get full access all the way through everything on that um, what we try and do is kind of give you the training to then go out and practice with so i hope this is going to inspire many of you to kind of see how simple it is to do now i've got a complicated setup in today however only one light at any one time is going to be used. Let me explain the, set, uh, the setup that I've got here. Uh, I forgot to say as well, they've just low, uh, kind of waved the flag <laughs> in for me. Questions in the question panel, and I'll do them at the end, all right? So uh, basically get those in. Right, I've got four lights. Uh, one little light with a shoot-through umbrella. Um, that is to really show you it's in the wrong place and it's not going to do a very good job, all right? Then I've got one light in the sky on a honeycomb. That's gonna be a real dramatic type of uh, image. And both of these are from a kit, and the kit kind of what comes with it, except I've added a honeycomb onto that, that one. These are the Elinchrom D light ones, okay? Uh, but this is a kind of a kit setup, uh, no matter what, a translucent umbrella to shoot through. Um, my kind of biggest light in the whole scene is uh, another Elinchrom light. It's an ELC 1000. I believe it was a 500. It's a 500 head, in fact. They all look, look the same, just got a different no number on the edge. Uh, and basically, that has got a, a Photix um, softbox, and that's a 105 round, and it's got a, a grid on the actual front of it and things, really, okay? And that is really there to kind of control the light and the spill and everything else. So that's number three light. And then behind, I might not sure if you can see i definitely can see from up there but just hidden behind here is another light in fact and this is kind of give me the wash light and so on we're going to get four different styles of photograph i can guarantee you and we're only going to be you using uh, as a rule one light at a time so as far as the set the setup is concerned we've uh, set up what have we done for 400 uh, ISO 125th of a second and f11. I've gone for the f11 because I'm shooting more of a commercial kind of fashion So I need a bigger depth of field rather than a shallow depth of field in portraiture You might might be aware. I usually shoot around about f4 with a prime lens um, That's either a 50 or 80 a minute 85 today. We use them 24 to 105 But we're using f11 for the depth of field to make it nice and sharp throughout Kels Come on in, darling. So we've got Kelsey, as I said, our lockdown model. Uh, she's been with us uh, all throughout the past month and things, really. Bit of a, um, an uneasy way to get on the box. I'll block it. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Honor, who's going to give her a hand to actually uh, just kind of put all the silks in place and things, really. So I'll give you that one. Uh, we did rehearse this a bit, didn't we? Yeah. All right, just to make it as simple as we can. What we've got to make sure, though, we're showing the pretty part of the pink and not the dull side of the pink sat at uh, the satin sheet can i give you that a minute on it and then you can basically work with her thanks love so um as far as the light uh, the lighting's concerned it's really um 
more dramatic I, I'm looking for rather than just the kind of the blandness and things. What we're expecting with this shoot, shoot through umbrella, I only decided to put, uh, to put that in place, you asked Brandon the vid, video guy, uh, minutes before we went live. It's like, oh God, come on, make a decision and stick to it. But I thought it was good. Instead of moving lights around today, we show the different effects from different modifiers and kind of how we can kind of change and look at the whole thing. Right, are we there? Okay, um, so we've pretty much got one half of the sheet coming in from the right side. On, I don't think we've got the satin side of this pink sheet visible. If you can take it off again, uh, please. Um, can you swap that around for me? Is that all right? Thanks, On. Uh, should we just do a quick test shot just while Honor's kind of fiddling there? Is that okay with it? So we're kind of just going to push up this hand um, up on the side. Take that up a bit higher, Honor, so I get a little bit... No, no, that's, perf that's perfect, that height. The, bot the bottom part, so I get real folds. Brilliant, thank you. And on your way past, can you just take Kelsey's stool away from me? Thanks, that was just to make it nice and easy. Foot around to this side, please. Okay, let's not even worry about it. Let's just kind of just test one light first, yeah? So this is our group one. This is the big light in the background with the kind of the grid coming through. So uh, pretty much there. Let me kind of shoot in camera. Let me focus in on face. Okay, let's just look at the four different lights. Uh, I've just got uh, the bit of the bra showing. Do you want to get some double gaff for a minute? We haven't got any boob uh, tape with us, sorry, today. Uh, and if you just give a double-sided side, piece to Kelsey, please, she can apply it herself. Kelsey, well, we're waiting for that. Should we just run through the lights? Is that all right? So, um, again, this is kind of group uh, one. Stretching the face up, please, darling, as much as you can. Okay, this is the, the kind of the big round light in the background. Then we've got group two, which is the backlight, which is just going to give us this lovely wash light. I quite like that. Then we've got uh, group three, which is the kind of the diffusion of umbrella. In case you can see, it's rubbish, all right? We did want to actually show you that. And then we've basically got group four, which is this overhead honeycomb. Oh, wrong button mark. Group four, which is the overhead honeycomb. Relax, please, uh, darling. That's going to give us the most drama in the image. I've got to make sure I'm not going to lose that hand. So back off a bit, Clegg on. Focus in a different place. Kels, do you want to just put that bit of tape on? I think we just need the one on the left boob, no? Great. Um, I wonder if we could hire this right-hand stand much higher. Is that okay? From uh, the bottom one, that's it. Take it up much higher for me if you can. Just push it. To me, that's it. Spit stick. Nice. Yeah, brilliant. Let's do that. Great, thank you. I think this hand is going to come out pretty much straight. This one's going to be quite stiff here. Stick it on. Hand up. Get that right into the seam. That's it. Hand out a little bit more. Forget about hanging on to it. Just let it come above it. That's love, it's there. So we're kind of, there you go. So this is our kind of implied. Let's have a quick check. It's gorgeous. Got both hands and everything else with it. I, I'm going to shoot quickly, all right, just to kind of get a variety, and then we'll kind of look at how we're going to change things a little bit more. Okay, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay. Raise the chin a little bit more, please. Great. Push for, uh, forward with the top of the torso more. Stretch up those fig fingers more for me, just lovely. Twist the hand around to me as well. Don't hang on to this sheet at all with that right hand. Turn the uh, hand around to me more if you can. This one more around to me. There you go. Looking up high again, please, Kels. It's beautiful, darling. Eyes closed. Open again. Really push that back knee up higher. <laughs> and point in the toe. That's great, just there. Eyes closed again, darling. Brilliant, okay, relax. So there's our first, we've got real, real dynamic kind of going on in here. Obviously it needs a little bit of trimming, but really nice. Let's go into our group one. So we know that this is our good light. It's gonna give almost a shoot through as far as the sheerness to the material as well. So this would be a good position of light. This is the round light in the background with the kind of the uh, egg crates on. 
and this is kind of uh, going to shoot across the body, shoot through the actual material as well. So it could almost uh, give us a, a little bit of a see-through if it was nude. Okay, Kels, let's do the same pose. Um, push that one knee up much higher for me. There you go. Flat against the box if you can get it there. Don't fall off the box. We didn't rehearse that. Quick test. Well, stay there. Let me just check it. It's great. Okay, brilliant. And again, raise the chin more. Excellent. And again, higher. Eyes open high. Key, keep it. Just lean in towards this hand and lower and look at the hand more. Keep it. Lower the chin. Tilt the head onto this ear for me. This ear to me. That, uh, there's the shot. Love it. Again, beautiful. And one more. Love it. Relax. Okay. So there we've got nice big light and things really. It's touching and spilling onto the white back, background a little bit. It's okay. Um, but it's, it's giving us good definition of the body. It's lighting the five planes of the face, which is the forehead, the chin, the two cheeks and the nose, of course. And it's giving the cross and the light actually on the body. So we've got good drama. Let's kind of now look. We're going to um, not uh, shoot for very long. Um, because this is grouped, oh, sorry, we are going to shoot this one. Um, let's do the same pose for me if you can. I do apologise how hard that box is. We did have a cushion on in rehearsal, didn't we? So <laughs> now she knows how good the cushion was. Sorry, Kels, really push that hand up more. That's lovely. Quick test, just to make sure I got all the limbs. It's great. I love this. Great, look in that way more. Turn the head away from me more. Keep it, eyes closed and high. Higher with that foot. That's lovely. Push forward with the tummy, sucking in. Beautiful hands. Love it. Relax. Okay, really, really nice. I like that because it is almost sheer. We've got that other light behind her, as you know, it's coming through. In fact, when we're doing the test without the silk, uh, it was giving some flare back onto the cadmium as well. If I wanted to, we could control that light down a little bit in power, which we'll do later on, in fact, but let's just go. Right, let's just show you the absolutely awful light, which is this, uh, um, uh, the umbrella uh, kind of in, in, in the front. So let's just do it and just do one shot. Relax a minute. Um, you can see pretty much without any other lights in the mix, the drama isn't there with this light. And um, as I've talked to you in the past, uh, remember we always talk about the uh, light uh, going from the nine o'clock position around to the three o'clock position in a, a clockwise rotation will always give us more drama of the image. So let's look at the lights. We've got the, the light with the egg crate in the background. That's pretty much at the 10 o'clock position. We've got the light that is in the honeycomb above her. That's pretty much at the 12 o'clock high. So it is slightly behind, uh, behind her. Plus, of course, we've got the light absolutely behind the box, which is a 12 o'clock background light. So that's giving us that kind of beautiful kind of look and feel. So again, think about what we're trying to create. We're really trying to create dra a drama because this light is in the front. It ain't doing anything, you know? The last thing I wanna do is kind of bring it into the frontal light here, okay? Because it's even gonna be flatter. If I want to change this quality from this light, I've gotta do something dramatic with it. So if we raise this up and we put it into this kind of pose, are you okay to hold that for me? Okay, thanks. So let's do the same shot now. Sorry, Kels. Up again, that's beautiful. Let's have a quick look. You can see already how this will change the image. Yeah, just from above. Can you get a little bit higher with it? There you go. And now lean it in on top of her. There you go, straight there. And relax, Kelsey. Thanks, Anna. Relax. Relax it down. So you can see the difference now. If I was going to use the umbrella light, um, we can see how that top umbrella now is in a much better position when we're down on the down light, okay? So it's kind of having a street light effect or the moonlight effect coming down on us. And we've got these fantastic folds and everything else and things, really. And this allows us to use a lot more dramatic uh, kind of a feeling of the light with even the simplest of accessories. So don't be afraid of the shoot through umbrellas, but try and put the light in a dramatic position. Otherwise, I think you're going to be disappointed uh, with the effects that you're going to get and things really. All right. So with that in mind, 
how do we use multiple lights together? Now, with the Elinchrom, uh, if I just kind of come close for a minute with this, uh, remember, get questions in live as we're going through, okay? So if you want to actually ask any questions, we'll answer those at the end. And if you're not a member of the Photographer Academy, when, remember, we've got great offers running throughout the whole year. Uh, 59 quid uh, gives you the pro membership, or 99 pound gives you the full business membership as well. All access passes 24-7, as it were. Right, back into the film. So if I just kind of bring up the um, uh, Elinchrom sky, uh, the sky port, he's just focusing on that, thank you very much, we can see what we've got here is basically a group button, all right? So the actual group means that when I press it, it moves across to the different groups. Now I'm in all, if I go to one, two, three, four, and then I go back to all again. What I can't do is choose group one and group three to fire together. It's a bit frustrating, but hey ho, you've, you learn to live with it. And the Elinchrom kind of system is just absolutely phenomenal in the way that I work. Um, if you're wondering how we're getting images across and what we're viewing on, uh, basically we're shooting a JPEG and a RAW file on camera. Remember using that 24 to 105 lens, we're F, F11, and then this orange cable coming out of the camera port on the side here is going into a bog standard normal lap, laptop and we're going into Capture One. And Capture One transports the image or allows us to see the JPEG file that I showed you. So if I turned it straight away into black and white, you would see the black and white anyway. And I think for this shot that we're doing here, that's what I'd like to do. Just show you that same image with the light high from above with that umbrella coming down. We can show how dramatic it really is. Honor, do you mind doing that light for me again? Get it as close as her as you can, please. And just, yeah, close and above. Get it right, right, right above her if you could, please. Let me just go into monochrome again and shoot the shot. When you're ready, Kels, stick on boobs. Don't fall off the... <laughs> we didn't do falling off the box as a rehearsal, all right? Okay, serious again, darling. Uh, Kels, uh, oh no, sorry, push it that way a little bit more if you can. That's great. Stretch up with the head, please, Kelsey. Quick test. Let's have a little look. It's fab, love it. Okay, let's do it again. Raise the chin more. Take, uh, take up a bit high on her if you can. Again, that's beautiful. One, one more, I'm just gonna shoot in color again. Just put the style back into color. Eyes closed, nice hands, point in the feet. Raise the chin, shove up more. Excellent, relax, and thanks, Anna. Okay, so we got some real kind of nice light going on there without any any trouble. The most dramatic light for me is going to be this overhead light. I think this is where we should really look at how are we going to have the lights combining together. So I think the dramatic light is above and the behind, all right? So in fact, even though this is good, it's really not doing anything. So what we're going to do is just switch this one off physically, all right? Just by pressing it off so you're not going to get confused on what's going on in this set. We're going to keep our overhead light running. Remember, that was my group four. I love that. But even though this light is um, really great, it's technically just a big light. All right, I'm going to switch this one off on the back. And this means by switching it off on the back, I can now run two groups together. In other words, all. If I'd done all before, it would have fired everything on group one, everything on group two, everything on group three, and everything on group four. And as I was saying to you, if we knew that group three or whatever it was, this kind of umbrella light wasn't very good, why would I want it to fire? If I knew that the light coming in from there was giving us a lovely edge light, but it's not really gonna play its part in the whole scene, why would I want it to fire? It's just understanding. These are the great things as photographers we get to make decisions on. Beauty is always in the eye of the holder, but it's up to you to play. That's what we do this for, is to inspire you to pick up your camera and go and shoot something. <laughs> so we could do everything that we're doing now with a, 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 a flashlight and a basically a room lamp okay, with a, a Lego toy. So if you've got nothing else to shoot, um, then find something to shoot or your, par or your partner, whatever it be. Right, shut up, Clegg on, and let's get on with it. Right, how's the bottom? It's a bit 
hard-edged, isn't it? So I didn't mean a bottom, I meant the box. Right, let's, let's do it. So let's do the overhead first, okay? Let's do some more shots with this, with this one. So go into pose as much as you can. Great, okay, let's do it, quick test. Just making sure everything works good. It does right, stretch as much as you can, darling. Right, bring that foot up the box a little bit more, that's great, raise the chin more, eyes closed. Excellent, and again, I'm just gonna move that, uh, relax a minute, just like move it in closer. Just gonna get this overhead. Roll. Let's do it again, ready? Just check it. Love it. Let's just um, pile a little bit. Ready again? Feet up. That's the hard, hard part, Kelsey, isn't it? Is those legs and the arms. Sorry, darling. Keep it. Love it. And one more. Keep, keep it again. And relax it. Okay, so that's our nice kind of image. Let's go back to the background, okay? This is the kind of the shoot through, the see through, and everything else. And then what I'm going to do is actually put it onto all, and we're going to shoot with both, uh, both of these lights. So first of all, let's shoot with the background light. So that's going to give us all that white out and that almost shine through. Let's do that. Ready? Quick test. So we've got that great image. Now what happens, raise the chin more, push the torso up higher for me, raise the he uh, feet up higher. You go for it, girl. She said it flipping hurts, clag on. And that's the relax. And that's our both lights together for a minute, okay? So you can see now what we just did in those last two images. This image is just with the backlight. This image is with the backlight <laughs> smiling. <laughs> we'll do it again, it's okay. But this is with just that backlight coming down on tour and things really. So we can change this look and feel to kind of what we want to do from, I think in a second, we're going to tone that white background down a little bit. Um, I'm just going to go in behind. And I've just tilted that light just a fraction up. So it's going to illuminate the top. Let's see it again. Don't have to go into f full pose for a minute, Kelsey, but it would be good if you did. And get your head into that light above. Keep it. Brilliant. So I've just kind of tilt, uh, tilted now. If you look at that last uh, image... Um, what I've tried to do is basically just give a little bit more illumination up here in the top of the image itself uh, compared to the, the neck. So this is the image what I've just done. I've kind of pointed it up. I haven't added any more power in whatever it is. I think, if anything, we need to actually do something with that background uh, light, either minimize the power, increase the power. But before I change too much, I definitely want to get a few shots here because... That box is, def is definitely a pain in Kelsey's butt. So, uh, as well as me, I know that, darling. I'm a nuisance. Okay, let's go for it. Let's do a few, a few shots, shooting on both. And then, fingers crossed, Brandon will panic and try and find some gel. Great, let's ready doing it. Keep it. Um, this has just dropped down here on the foot. It's not bad, but... Um, Okay with that? Nice one, Kels. Can you loosen this a little bit? There you go, brilliant. Great. Um, obviously, that, uh, just bring, bring this hand around more. That's great. Stretch up. Turn this tilt, the tilt of the hand around to me as well here. That's lovely. Up. Stretch, Kels. Feet up. Tor torso up. Don't fall off, though. It's embarrassing, you know that. Okay, relax. So let's now go into the group um, two, which is that over, uh, so it's not, it's the backlight. And I'm just gonna uh, slightly reduce down the power on the, over, uh, the overhead a minute, just a touch, just to do that quick test on her face. Just looks like it increased the power a little bit. That's, that's better. Okay, let's do it. So um, stretching up again, more, 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 more. Ready, let's go for it, love it. And again, and relax. Let me now just reduce down the back, uh, so the backlight, the see-through uh, see light. Um, before we reduce the power, let's pop on some gel, shall we? Have you got a pink there or a, a something? 
and a double clip. Didn't rehearse this bit. Pinky red. Can't get staff now, can you? Can't have you I bought my new t-shirt uh, t today. He's got to be nice to me. That and a. Can you have a look for a pinky one? I'll shoot with this one first, but I'd like to keep the colour palette the same. You don't want that's uh, not thick enough, I don't think. Let's do a quick test anyway. So let's see what the red jet. Oh, it's shocking, isn't it? Like it? Yes, Honor's not sure, okay. Let's, let's go for it, ready? Let's go with the head up in towards the light again. Stretch up high for me, let's do it for real. Excellent. Legs, tor tor torso, eyes open fully. Relax, like that. Let's, uh, I think we should reduce down the power a little bit or reduce the color, what have we got? I think that's pretty good. That's a real sulk. See? Professional. Right. This is not going to give as saturated as you just saw with the red because it's, it's lesser in colour. So in other words, for now, I'll just do the quick test shot anyway, Kels. Um, you can see that it's good, but it's going to be kind of bleached out, and that's because there's too much light coming through it. So now we need to select the power of the light that we're going to adjust, yeah? And the first thing I'm going to do is reduce it down by two, by two stops fully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That gives me an audio to say, yes, I've done my job. Okay, I've gone down. Now, um, really what we're looking at is when we're doing a high key style of image, I'm bleaching out the background. So it's two stops more, no, never use, usually more than two stops. And the reason being is you get the flare, uh, the flare back. For the image that we shot, first, first of all, with that back light, you saw we did have this almost translucent white coming through. That was set in the effect to actually give us this kind of wash back. Now we want a bit of sat a saturation in colour. So I've just reduced that down by two stops. And there we can see it. Yes or no? Less or more? More colour, less colour. Honour is just off camera as you're giving the nod or the shake of the head. What do you think? Not more. Not more. I think a little bit less. Okay, let's do it. Princess of the Pink Silk. Remember to get your questions in, guys. We're going to finish soon. That's lovely. Quick test, darling. Sorry, one second. Love it. Go. I want to do a few of those. Okay, ready? Again, change the arm position, the hand position a little bit more. Turn it around to me. It's lovely. Stretch the head up. A little bit lower with the chin then. Relax. Let's shoot with both lights. Ready? Last six shots. She said, I've heard that before. No smiling either, you. Okay, let's do it. Quick test. One sec. It's lovely. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to move that light just on top of you a little bit more. You're amazing. Okay. Right, let's do it. Go, go, go. Okay, it's lovely. Ready? Stretch. Eyes shut. Again, lost your left hand. Lovely. Bring it in more. Stretch everything now. Feet, arms, legs, higher. And the last shot. Yay! <laughs> nice shot, that girl. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you. Give, give Chel Kelsey a stool, please. You should give a round of applause, but in this case, you're going to have a stool to get off. Brilliant. Uh, loved it kind of thing with it. Let's do some questions, shall we? Um, we're just going to go to the screen a minute, just to give Kel uh, Kelsey time to come off uh, stage. So um, I think you'll see that, you know, the difference being um, by adding that colour gel onto the image has made a more dramatic photograph. Remember, as it went, Kelsey, absolutely brilliant, darling, and you are done for the day. Busy, busy day, thanks. 
Thank you. Um, so again, what we've got here, this lovely light coming through. I almost love the translucency of all of all the light, uh, a kind of where the tape has kind of come on to the actual uh, stick on bra. I think it kind of looks like a bit of a nipple, which is it's not a bad thing at all, but it's not. It's just a bit of tape. Loving the fingers and the hands and everything else with it and things really, really, really good. But again, it's worth to actually shoot that kind of little bit of silhouette. But remember, a silhouette really does need to be um, thought about kind of actually in the shape of actually how it's being positioned actually on the body so in other words you know if you're looking front on and everything is lit behind and basically they're not silhouette you're just a blob it's when you turn the body to the side and the face to the side that's where you start to kind of see the silhouettes and things really um but yeah some really really great images there um I think the red was a bit too powerful for me. I'm glad we used the same color palette. So thanks to Honor for um, taking the red away and basically giving me the, uh, uh, the pink that we needed to complete the image. If we needed a, a flat wash of color, then obviously you'd either light from both sides, a softer diffusion like with a soft box to give a new, uh, 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 an even illumination across the background, or of course use a background paper. That's us done. Right, question time. Before we get them, Remember, if you're not a Photographer Academy, head over to the photographeracademy.com. I'm sure there's a link somewhere. Um, basically, you can actually see over 3,000 films. Remember, we've got 3,000 fil films there, but we've probably thrown away around about 1,500 films already in the past 13 years that we've uh, been uh, live through the Photographer Academy. Questions, Brandon? I'm yours. Go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, te uh, technically we did the shot with less lights because we did it with one light. And then we basically had, sorry, I just had to move my own screen because he didn't bother. Um, uh, yeah, we could do it with one light and that's the one light that we were doing, obviously the honeycomb light from above. I absolutely love that silhouette-y kind of thing, but let's go backwards where I loved these images. Okay, so there's absolutely, and that is one light. All right, that is just the light behind the box. And if you're under, not sure what I'm on about, there's that light behind the box, okay? So it, it's just been there the whole time with it. So the answer's yes. Okay, thank you. Um, um, so with the images of the gel, is it possible to reduce the yellow glow from the background light? Yeah, it's technically not a yellow glow. It's an overexposure glow that you're actually seeing. It won't be yellow in the post at uh, the post-production you might just be seeing it as far as the television is concerned and things really. But yeah, the halo uh, that you're refer referring to might be visible on your screen, but it's not on ours. The, the only yellow that you're physically going to get is if you've got a modeling bulb that is left on and you're working in a very uh, wide open aperture like 284 and base basically you can still see its modeling bulb going on. If, if the modeling bulb was affecting you as far as when it was switched off, um, oh, he says looking for the wrong button so if when we were if you're referring to some of the other images here where we're just photographing with the one light from above and basically you're on about this yellowing light just actually is acting like a bit of a, se a separation in this f11 f16 kind of world that modeling bulb isn't really going to show up but the worst one's worse you can just do what i just did and switch switch it off Honor is dying to go through. Have you gone? She's gone. That's all right. Go. Any more qu quest questions? Um, there's one more technical question. Um, somebody is using a mirror camera with a studio flash, and they want to work at f11 at 200 a second. Um, and through the Lightroom um, monitor on their camera, it's very dark. So uh, the question was, um, they're trying to use flash for the mirrorless camera, and when they're looking through the back, it's very, very dark. Um, it's probably that you're not getting enough uh, exposure. Uh, so in other words, there's not enough flash for the aperture you chose, or the flash to camera sync is there's something not going. So with some flash uh, units, specifically um, studio, uh, studio flash, you can actually change the slight... Um, time that it fires so in other words if you're using say um, an on-camera flash or a speed light flash to fire another flash 
there's sometimes the strobe un unit, in other words, the, the kind of the pro flash, uh, needs to be set in a slightly different setting with it and things really, but um, not quite sure. But I would definitely, first of all, try that. It kind of is seeing some flash, so start to work with a, a wider aperture first and then start to dial, uh, dial it down to see how much flash. Inherently, um, if you're having problems with not enough exposure with flash photography, it's, us it's usually that you're working on too small an ap aperture. Remember, the smaller the aperture, the less light can get through. So that would be the likes of, you know, 11, 16, 22, and so on. And obviously, if there's not enough flash going to fire, it would be the same as day uh, daylight. There's just not enough illumination. But with mirrorless, it shouldn't be the shutter speed so much. If you're ever um, too high a shutter sync is concerned uh, most dslrs nobody else they're based around about 125th to 200 uh, 200 of a second as a rule with um studio flash speed uh, speed light technology allows you to shoot at a much much higher sync even some of my elinchrom uh kind of portable flashes allows me to shoot up to 64 thousandth of a second uh, which is just ama amazing, but it's all about the flash curve, how much the flash curve the camera is able to see when you shoot a very, very high sync shutter speed and things ready. No more questions. Brilliant. Thank you for joining me live. I think if we go back to the screen for one sec second, that is why you join us live, I believe, on a Wednesday at five o'clock is because we have knocked it out of the park every single session that we've done so far. And today was the first day we've had 20 minutes to waste and test before we were going live because we're into a full days of filming through the academy. So uh, again, it's just um, making sure that you join us live for different technique and kind of different ideas. But it doesn't matter what I do, okay? I need you to do it. I need you to pick up your camera now and start playing with it and fiddling with it in some, I don't care if it's a Lego figure, if it's a vase of flowers, whatever we're doing, we're doing some fine art photography in two weeks time, some still life photography and everything else when we start our commercial series with it. But you've got to pick up your camera, you've got to take photographs and you've got to shoot better tomorrow than you do do today. Uh, remember, if you're a member of the Photographer Academy, um, uh, at least once a month we have a live photo critique where you get to submit images and I give you a kind of appraisal straight away and I point out the things that would make that photograph really kind of uh, change its whole look and feel straight away as well with it. Thanks for joining me live. Remember to head over to the Photographer Academy. We need members to survive. Do not forget that. So uh, lovely to kind of see you all with us. Thanks. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.